introduction. Yes, uh, I'm, I'm very pleased to, to help bring uh, API days to, to India for the, the very first time. And uh, we, uh, as many mentioned, uh, the, the whole API days uh, community is um, very, very supportive of um, uh, the, our, our Indian uh, colleagues. And we, we uh, look forward to uh, a quick recovery uh, from, from the current situation. We're, we're very pleased to bring you two very strong uh, keynote presenters, uh, which will will talk about the um, uh, about how uh, digitalization can really help uh, the economy to grow, but also to grow safely and um, and enable people to do business. Our first keynote speaker uh, is Praveena Rai. She is the uh, Chief Operating Officer of the National Payments Corporation of India. Welcome, Praveena. Um, Praveena, um, the, uh, the UPI, the Unified Payments Interface, is not only a great success story in itself, but it's also a great enabler of the digitization of the Indian economy. And, um, and so we're really excited to, uh, to hear from you about, uh, about the UPI story and how NPCI is, uh, is advancing that. Thank you very much. Uh... John, it's a lovely day in, in Mumbai here after weathering uh, two days of a storm that passed us by. And of course, you know, we are dealing with a bigger storm of the pandemic, but uh, hopefully we'll have a very good discussion today with a number of uh, speakers that you have lined up. And I'm, I'm really uh, privileged and thank you very much for uh, uh, introducing me and uh, bringing on NPCI and the work that we're doing on digital payments uh, to open the day. So I'm I'm going to move on to uh, my my screen here, <clears throat> and I like the way that Mendy really started this off uh, to say that uh, this is about connecting APIs with humans, and you know that's really our focus as well, which is the passion about people and payments and how do we really bring this together. <clears throat> So I don't have to introduce APIs to this to this uh, group we have. Uh, today, APIs are used practically in everything that we have to do in our lives um, in a digital form. So you know, whether it is uh, you know accessing uh, the phone, simple navigation, you know, just moving from place A to place B. You know, we don't do that without opening up our maps. Uh, the entire social world is working on APIs. Uh, and certainly as we move beyond the social space and come into services, banking leads the way. And uh, being part of the banking and payment sector, I can certainly vouch for all the uh, activities that have happened and uh, completely powered by the API infrastructure there. I don't want to call out here, you know, in these times, the COVID resources, you know, things globally that have happened have also been powered up by APIs. You know, if you look at number of <clears throat> organizations and institutes, for example, uh, the John Hopkins University, they opened up all the uh, the data on, on COVID on APIs. So it's, it's completely open API and anyone is able to pull out and create an app uh, so that the information and data associated with APIs is freely available. In India, we've had what we call the COVID app that is used to book vaccinations, again, based on open APIs. Uh, very healthy debate around it, you know, did uh, these open APIs create a digital divide uh, or are they an opportunity to uh, create a digital bridge? A digital divide, the debate goes, is that people who are more tech savvy, digitally, uh, digitally enabled, are able to, you know, create these apps, have access to the apps, you know, if there is a a vaccination center opening up, especially when you have a supply constraint, they are able to very quickly access these resources. Uh, it's, but it's also a, a, a framework for creating a digital bridge <clears throat> because uh, especially in a country like India, assistive services is, are, are always available and the, you know there is an entire ecosystem that operates on that. So these same services uh, that are available to somebody who's very tech active then becomes available to everybody else. And needless to say, over time, uh, this creates the enabler and motivator for, for people to move more digital. 
So these are things that we are seeing today in, in today's times and on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, you know, and uh, Mehdi and John both spoke about the success of UPI and uh, the, the digitization of services in India. And really, that is on the back of the India tech stack uh, with open APIs and uh, API-driven identification service of using Aadhaar, uh, UPI, which is based on uh, APIs for the payment stack, uh, the account aggregators, which is really going to enable uh, consent-based sharing of information. So uh, I just picked up three examples, and <clears throat> those of you who, who know about the India uh, tech stack really will understand this and, and the power that this takes. And uh, I think we're still looking just at the foundation framework, and there's a lot more to go there. Uh, so if we look at digital banking today, the entire life cycle of a customer uh, and the customer's banking experience has gone digital. And each one of these is, is powered by the API world. So right from, <clears throat> right from sourcing a customer uh, to onboarding a customer. Uh, and, and this is where a number of regulatory enablers have also got created in the last two years. So where there were uh, doubts and where uh, the real efficacy and you know, the, the balance between risk and convenience uh, was taking place. I think the pandemic situation of the last two years really created a, uh, a, a moment in time whose only silver lining probably is uh, the faster movement of both customer acceptance, um, you know, movement of the sectors like corporates and banks, as well as the uh, regulations and policy framework and things like EKYC, video KYC uh, in the Indian environment have been some of them. <clears throat> We're also looking at uh, grievance register, uh, you know, the entire sort of complaint management, dispute management cycle uh, happening using uh, fully digital and, uh, you know, API interfaces, uh, marketing and, uh, you know, digital banking. So the, the entire range of services uh, is now powered uh, for digital banking. And I think uh, uh, it really does not require a customer to walk into a branch to get a, a service anymore. Now, when we when we move to UPI, and uh, you know, we spoke of the the India tech stack. Uh, UPI clearly is a is a flagship there. Uh, it it forms the basis of uh, the payment service, uh, of which of course banks are users. But the beauty about UPI is it's also created a, a, a environment, a framework. Uh, where the participation is not just from banks, but from, you know, across uh, any industry participant, uh, what is you know, typically called a fintech uh, these days. Uh, of course, you know, the UPI numbers speak for themselves, uh, 2.7 billion transactions of late. Uh, digital transactions and payments themselves cost about, crossed about 30, 35 billion uh, transactions last year. And I think we are continuing to see that grow. Uh, <clears throat> the number of banks on 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 UPI, you know, we have more than uh, 170 banks. So 1,100 banks in India. If you take every single small uh, rural bank and cooperative bank in the country, uh, but the large banks, you know, are really about 50, 60 of them. Uh, but 170 banks really implies that UPI gets deeper and deeper into the markets, and there are 50 applications using UPI. Um, and UPI, these applications are not just bank apps. Uh, they are also what are called third-party apps. So it, it need not be a banking entity uh, to participate in UPI and, and really benefit from, from what UPI offers. Um, and, and what really has created this, this magic of UPI, right, is, is what, what we refer to as the, the four-party model. This four-party model uh, is completely API-powered and has created an environment where the actual banking transaction, which is the, the debit from an account and a credit into an account, <clears throat> and you see these two boxes, the debitor bank and the beneficiary bank, these can be disassociated from the interface of the user. So there is a payer, somebody who's making the payment, and a payee who's receiving the payment, and they both may be using an app, which are very different from those of the actual banks that they use as their underlying accounts. So this really creates an environment where 
the control, compliance, and all the banking activities stay with the bank. And the payer and pay can be working on apps, uh, which could be the banking app. It could also be an app offered by um, a player who's really focused on uh, user experience, convenience, and, and offering a, a larger range of services to the to the consumers. Uh, so this model, uh, you know, really has opened up the the field for for innovation on UPI. Uh, it's also created, uh, you know, services which uh, earlier were not really enjoyed by by the user. And all of this happens in a few seconds, right? So it's <clears throat> it's not near real time. It's a pure digital transaction. It's it's completely instant, end to end. Uh, you know, just a few seconds. So by the time I have made a payment, I have a confirmation of the fact that somebody has been paid and my my account has been debited. Um, now, the, the fact that APIs power this model uh, has enabled a lot of innovation around the model. The possibility of players, banks, or fintechs to come in and, uh, you know, experiment with these UPIs. Uh, you know, we also run something we call an API accelerator uh, to really experiment with these UPIs, uh, APIs and, uh, you know, work on models that could be quite niche. You know, there could be somebody doing a a fast food uh, app, there could be you know, a, a experiment on a retail app, and you know, there are different experiences that can evolve uh, out of this model. <clears throat> and, and because of the, uh, the, it, the structure being API based, the services uh, are also quite uh, vast. So you know, it could be a simple payment service. Uh, there is also something called a collect service. Uh, and we're constantly with feedback from the market, understanding what consumers need or what the banks need, you know, what, what really uh, merchants are looking for. Uh, we're able to move this into you know, many uh, different kind of services as a roadmap on a continuous basis. Uh, so the most recent one actually is something called the UPI Autopay, uh, which is used for uh, recording mandates. Uh, so this is, uh, you know, really, I, I thought it would be interesting to show uh, what the power of, uh, of UPI uh, has been. And, uh, you know, of course, as with any product, you know, the early stage has been uh, one of a learning curve and one which the market took some time to understand. Uh, after Aadhaar, which is India's identity-based uh, identity system, uh, UPI was really the one that... Uh, that came to market and it, it took some time for people to understand it, to start using it. But I think once the discovery took place, uh, we're seeing the, the, the natural growth of uh, the UPI transactions. Uh, so we are today at about 2.77 billion, 2.7 something billion uh, as of April. And I think you see these, um, the V-shaped uh, curve that you see in April 20, that's the first wave of the pandemic in India. Uh, where India went into a full lockdown. <clears throat> so immediately the transactions dipped. Um, however, it was also the moment when uh, when users realized, merchants realized uh, that using a transaction, using uh, a payment mode to support their services and goods for consumers to buy essentials, you know, really UPI was the way to do it because it's completely digital, completely phone-based. Uh, one need not even visit a shop to complete the transaction. So you had every small merchant putting up their catalog, people being able to just phone in or send in a message with their orders, get a link and, and make a payment online. So that really saw the recovery of, of transactions. And, you know, we've seen a steeper growth uh, you know, in these times. So, <clears throat> you know, our, our market research tells us that consumers who were uh, infrequent users of UPI. You know, they, yeah, they had adopted UPI, but not really very heavy users, really moved to a point where probably they don't use any other payment mode anymore. So uh, we've had consumers tell us that um, uh, they only use UPI for, for all their transactions. So they've moved, they are vegetable vendors and uh, you know bread vendors and you know every single entity they interact with uh, has been moved uh, to, to UPI. So that's really what we're seeing. And of course, you can see that little uh, flattening happening in April, which which is uh, impact of the environment we see today, and uh, the second wave of the pandemic. Um, 
uh, and uh, you know while there was about a 20 percent dip last time i think we're hardly looking at something in the range of two to three percent uh we're watching the space closely and i and i think that uh, uh <clears throat> the focus is really to take upi uh to every part of of the country and to every citizen to be sure that as a safe mechanism to make payments in this uh, tough situation in this uh, in the pandemic situation, the service is available, highly available, uh, and uh, has reached every citizen of the country. And, and that's the big focus we have now. Um, just thought I'll, I'll share some, some stats to give you a sense of how uh, the market has been moving here. Uh, you know, volume has more than doubled every year. The, the graph speaks for itself. <clears throat> The merchant transactions, you know, these volumes have two components. One is what we call the, the remittance. Uh, the four-party model that I uh, showed you earlier uh, really looked at how an individual pays another individual uh, for a domestic remittance transaction. And um, the merchant transactions, uh, whether by scanning a QR code in a physical store or, uh, you know, making an online payment, uh, the merchant transactions are currently at about 45 uh, percent these would have this would have been about 20 25 percent you know a couple of years back so that's really how the merchant transactions have really picked up uh, because you know every small merchant large merchant uh, established uh, you know supermarket you know every single merchant now sees the, the value of using uh, upi for their consumers uh, we're also seeing the, the the resilient merchant categories you know uh, obviously uh, groceries uh, you know broadband and mobile recharge uh, given that people are typically <clears throat> at home uh, you know working school entertainment whatever have you similarly cable and tv so these are some of the resilient merchant categories no matter what the environment is these categories you know we seem tend to do well uh, the merchants are adopted in a big way to the uh, to the API based services, as as well as uh, you know what we offer as as you know, SDKs in the apps. Uh, there are you know of course categories uh, you know as one would expect retail, restaurants, fuel, uh, with not many people moving around and, uh, and and not really using public spaces. These are categories uh, which will over time uh, you know find their uh, recovery. Uh, interesting trend is also the growing use of micro value payments less than 100 rupees this is you know less than two dollars uh, us <clears throat> and this is really used for you know i just go out i i, I you know buy a, a cup of tea and you know i'm paying with uh, with upi so interesting to see this growing use of micro value payments and i think that's going to create another uh, entire range of uh, you know industry options and, and opportunities challenging the way we are able to scale up the, the UPI infrastructure uh, and the kind of uh, technology architecture that is required to support it, uh, all of which is very much uh, you know, under play uh, from, the, from the NPCI uh, environment here. Uh, you know, I've, I've sort of mentioned this UPI Chalega, uh, India Pay Safe. Uh, you know, these are uh, some campaigns that uh, you know, we've run and most importantly, in the context of ensuring that the awareness about uh, about UPI, awareness about the service uh, is widespread and, and people are able to benefit from uh, the service that is that is available. Um, and even small entrepreneurs, uh, small fintechs uh, in, in remote parts of the country are able to understand what uh, the API ecosystem offers and they're able to then innovate for their local markets. Uh, which may not even uh, be necessarily at a at the scale of a, of a pan India requirement. Uh, we are also looking at potentially the need for the use of voice, uh, you know, vernacular apps, so on and so forth. So I think you know the surface is, is still just being scratched, and there's there's so much uh, work left and so much more to do uh, in terms of really taking the full opportunity of what this offers. Um, uh, you know, just wanted to share a little bit about uh, what this has done from a share of users. Um, so if you look at some of the industry categories, uh, for example, um, electronics or uh, food and grocery, etc. Now we're really finding uh, in the e-commerce space that UPI tends to be 
between you know, 25 to 40 percent uh, of the market. <clears throat> so it's really uh, taking a share from the card space or you know other kind of digital channels and certainly replacing uh, cash transactions in a very big way. Um, so where, where are we now after uh, we, we've seen the numbers from an Indian context? I think UPI is really looking at taking the UPI protocol, the UPI specification, um, the APIs uh, global. Uh, <clears throat> so we've got NPCI uh, has set up an entity called um, NPCI International Private Limited. Uh, and uh, NPCI International Private Limited is focused on uh, taking NPCI services and one of the most important ones being UPI um, to any other uh, location country that can benefit from it. Uh, the same open API standards uh, work. Um, and also to, to look at how uh, the interface and the uh, international corridors can also get, uh, uh, get executed. So we've got something called the foreign inward remittance by which a person overseas will be able to use the UPI ID of somebody in India, uh, validate and verify the account and make a, an instantaneous uh, digital transaction. Of course, it's, it's still early days of uh, how that's playing out and uh, you know, look forward to uh, connecting up more uh, people in payments uh, on the back of uh, our, our services. Uh, thank you so much Thanks. for having me here. Having me here. Thanks. Thanks very much, uh, Praveena. That's um, that's great insight to how uh, UPI has uh, has grown. We we actually have several great questions in the chat, um, so I I'd like to pick up some of those um, in in reasonable sort of order. So one of them is um, very very interesting. What what are, what challenges still remain for API adoption uh, in India? So, I mean, particularly, you know, you've, you've got a very high rate of um, adoption of smartphones, something like 500 million users, but that's not 1.3 billion. So there is still probably a, a last last mile problem or a, a digital divide problem. How do you see um, how do you see those sorts of challenges being overcome uh, over time? I think the the knowledge of APIs, the the uh, power of APIs, the kind of use cases that APIs can solve, uh, needs to be made very widely known and very widely available. Uh, it it still tends to be the uh, the knowledge base of uh, certain technical industries, people who are in the sector, and of course, you know, founders and startups who are very passionate about the space. Uh, but extending and expanding this into the into the universities, into um, all our uh, you know engineering colleges and, and, and just colleges that are uh, available in, in far flung locations, uh, will I think ensure that the true power of what the APIs can can deliver uh, starts getting even more democratized. So it's it, you know API by itself is. Uh, open APIs, especially you know, create a highly democratized uh, you know, framework for anyone to use. But the awareness of what's available and the awareness of how they can be deployed, uh, you know, will will benefit from a lot more focus and work there. Uh -huh. So um, that that graph shows, um, apart from a couple of short um, breaks, it shows uh, an accelerating adoption uh, of of UPI. Um, <laughs> Who are the who are the major players who are driving it right now, um, in terms of the um, wh whether they're local uh, Indian or, or non-Indian players uh, who are who are driving? I mean, U UPI is really the the payment rail. It's the infrastructure that a lot of uh, a lot of other uh, are riding on. And who's um, who's the who are the, the biggest players right now? So I think uh, I look at it in two ways, right? Uh, the beauty of what UPI is the depth and reach that it has. Um, so the the number is about uh, you know 50 applications, uh, you know, 170 plus uh, banks that are connected to it, and if I'm not wrong, nearly uh, you know 25, 30 million merchants uh, who are using this. I mean, they are really the beauty of of UPI. 
uh, the infrastructure by itself and the services are provided by all the big banks. So, you know, all the big banks in the country uh, would be large drivers of UPI. We have the State Bank of India, uh, HDFC Bank, Access Bank, ICICI Bank. So they are, they are amongst the, the large uh, volume drivers of uh, UPI. Um, and of course, you know, you have the big apps. So we have a number of apps, like I said, 50 apps, banking apps, as well as uh, non-banking, you know, third-party apps. Uh, amongst the banking apps, again, the big banks do tend to have uh, a, a fair share of those numbers. Uh, but I'll also add in there Access or Yes Bank. Uh, we also have the large apps like, uh, you know, Google Pay, Phone Pay, uh, you know, Paytm. We also run an app called Beam. Uh, which is something that uh, you know we use to really launch all the UPI functionality. So these these are some of the the large uh, players there, and um, uh, it's a very vibrant ecosystem. And you know we're looking for uh, more players to join in, and I think provide more niche services. Uh, you know solve problems that have not yet been solved uh, to really deepen the use of UPI in the market. Well, that's that's great. Actually, that leads to another question um, because we have a very uh, keen API community. Uh, a question about how how developers can get access to the UPI uh, API. Is there a developer portal um, where people can look at the um, <coughs> documentation and, and gain access? What what really is your process for onboarding new partners? You know, you mentioned 170 banks. Um, how many thousand um, merchants? Uh, it's it's quite a lot. But how do you how do you how have you been able to scale that? And um, and what's your continuing um, approach to, uh, to to growing that uh, partnership? Yeah. So on a regular basis, uh, of course, our, our APIs are, are available. The API documentation is available. Um, and as the ecosystem players get ready, we have a, a onboarding process called certification. So the APIs, you know, come in for testing in an, in an interoperable manner because it's not a, a one-sided testing. They need to be tested to ensure that all sides of the four-party transaction are, are working well. So we do provide the, the full range of uh, what we call onboarding and, and certification services. Uh, but I, I spoke about an API accelerator. So that's really kind of more designed uh, like a sandbox uh, where developers you know, can come and experiment, understand the APIs, also give us feedback on what they would like more of, uh, what could be different. Uh, so you know, I can certainly, for interested people, you know, share some details about that. It's available on our website, uh, the NPCI website for, for API accelerator. Great. Well, thanks very much. And I believe also you did a, uh, an accelerator program with the Apex platform uh, recently. So uh, yeah, lots of lots of lots of ways for people to uh, participate in this growth. Thanks very much uh, for sharing those, those insights, uh, Pravina. And we look forward to uh, to the continued uh, growth and, and scaling uh, of UPI and how it how it uh, helps the Indian economy grow. Thanks very much. Thank you very much.